What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you all of the approaches to creating openings in Revit. So when it comes to creating openings in Revit, we usually have doors and then we have windows and that's it. Now, of course, that's not the only approach to creating opens, openings in Revit. You can actually create openings that don't really have to have any doors and windows, that they can be just regular openings. You can make openings in walls, floors, roofs, pretty much anything. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you all of the tools, tips, and all of the tools, the features of those tools, and all of the little tips and tricks along the way to creating openings in Revit. Okay, so that's what the tutorial is going to be all about, but before I get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and also make sure to subscribe. I make multiple Revit tutorials each uh, week, and also I make one one-hour Advanced Balkan Architect course. All of those courses can be found on my Patreon, first link in the description, and there you can find all of my Revit project files. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. So here we are at the Revit start page, so I'm just going to go to models and then click here on new, and for the template I'm just going to choose the architectural template for this simple demonstration. So when it comes to openings in Revit, we have some basic tools over here, and now I'm just going to be taking a look at how to use all of these tools. So first, uh, let's actually create a structure where we can test these out. So uh, just to create a quick structure, I'm going to navigate here to South Elevation. And also, let's go immediately into Manage and just change the project units from millimeters into perhaps uh, centimeters. I guess that would work a bit better. OK, so here we have level 2. It's at 400 uh, centimeters. That's OK. Now I'm going to go back to Architecture, go to Levels, and let's add uh, just a couple of more levels. So so go here to pick lines and then let's give it a uh, 400 centimeter offset and then let's add a few more levels. I'm going to go back to here to modify and then let's go into uh, level 1. Now once we're here in level 1 let's create a wall. So this is going to be a simple uh, wall, simple structure, just a simple rectangle like this. And once we have that created, uh, let's just select the walls, make sure that they go from level 1 all the way up to level 4. Okay, so once we have that, let's go now to level 4. Now, uh, unfortunately, we can't see these walls, but if we go here to properties, we have the view properties, and we can just set the underlay to level 3, hit apply, and now we can see the walls. Now let's add a simple roof on top, so again, just a rectangle on top, hit finish, there we go. Let's go back now into level 1 and let's add the floors. So this will be just a really simple structure. You can use walls here and then I just hover over one of the walls, uh, hit the tab key to select all of them and there we go, hit finish and we're done. Now uh, let's just go into 3D and let's switch here uh, the visual style from hidden line into wireframe and then uh, let's select the, the floor, uh, go to copy Go to paste, align to selected levels, and let's just paste it from 2. Hold the control key, select level 3, click OK, and there we go. Okay, so we have a simple structure that where we can test out all of our uh, all, all of our openings on. Okay, so let's go back here into hidden line and now let's start testing. So the first opening is this opening by face. So this is basically an opening that allows you to create a uh, perpendicular opening to the surface. So this can work both for walls or of course it can work for roofs as well. So if I just go here to uh, by face and then select perhaps this face over here, uh, now you can simply sketch something out. So I'm just going to place a simple circle on this side, hit finish and there we go. We have a simple opening within that face. Now this, as you can see, it's perpendicular to the face on which it's modeled. Now what I'm going to do next is go back here to architecture and then let's test out the uh, let's test out the vertical opening because I think it's interesting, especially in this context. So what I'm going to do is select the roof. Now we have to create our opening. Now for that you have to navigate kind of on top like this and let's make another circle. So let's create a circle like that. Okay, so as you can see, it kind of creates a horizontal circle, but once you hit finish, 
as you can see it makes that same circular opening but this one isn't perpendicular to the face it's actually perpendicular to the level on which it's been created so uh, you can see this uh, a bit better if we go here into level 4 and then if I just were to go here to a section and just create a simple section that goes through both of these let's just kind of center it a bit there we go and just open that up you'll notice that here uh, maybe turn this these and lines off here as you can see the opening is vertical and here the opening is perpendicular so that's basically the uh, the difference between these two types of openings so depending on what you're trying to achieve with your opening you would choose either one or the other uh, now you can use the same opening by face to uh, make openings in the wall but I'm going to be talking about that a bit later on because first let's test out a tool that's actually made for wall openings and that is this well wall opening tool <laughs> You wouldn't guess it, would you? Okay, so let's go here into uh, level one, open that up. Let's go to wall opening and you basically hover over the wall, click once, there we go, click once again, and you have your opening. So this is what that looks like. So you can kind of stretch it out a little bit. You get these little drag points at the edge. You can select it in the middle and then just drag the whole thing. And what's really cool about this is here you can go into constraints and you can actually set that up. Now here we have this weird number of minus 956.16 centimeters. And if I were to just go to 3D, the opening looks just like this so it's just a simple door opening or something like that so just a simple wall opening uh, now uh, the reason that Revit looks at, at it this, in this weird fashion is because it's treating it from the base constraint from level 1 up to the top constraint which is the top level that we have here on this wall which is this so it basically measures from the bottom to the top of the wall now in most cases you're not going to have that so what they suggest you do is first uh, change the top offset to zero and then change the top constraint to maybe uh, level two hit apply and now as you can see it goes from level one up to level two now why this is good because then you can actually control the opening a bit easier so you can give it a top offset of minus 100 so now we know that the height of this uh, opening is 300 centimeters it's 400 which is the height of level 2 minus 100 and we get of course 300 what's also cool about this is that you can organically uh, play around with it either in 3d view or maybe in elevations or sections so you can use these drag points on all sides to control this opening now I really like using this opening when it comes to creating uh, maybe a kitchen aisle or opening between the kitchen and your living room or your dining area so it's really cool where you can set it up as a kind of sort of a mini bar or something like that so it's a really cool way to create openings now the downside of creating an opening like this is the fact that it's only a rectangle you can't really change that shape now uh, to in order to change the shape you would have to go and use that uh, opening by face so you would have to try to select the element but as you can see we can't really select the wall we can select this face the roof face but we can't select the wall face we can select the floor but not the wall so what do we do in that uh, situation well uh, of course there is an alternative it's a bit slower unfortunately it takes a bit more time to create but it does give you a, a way more versatility so what I'm talking about is going here to component opening up the drop menu and here we have the model in place option so once you choose that and if you go with the walls category you're going to be creating a wall but you can also take away from walls so you can create a void inside of this wall so if I just go here to set work plane go with the pick a plane option and just select this wall here and if I go here to void go with an extrusion and just create a simple circle hit finish maybe extend it a little bit like this and now I have to go here to cut geometry select the the wall select this void and there we go we have a circular opening now what's really cool about this is not only the fact that you can make circular openings like this using voids it's also the fact that you can add to these openings they don't have to be just simple openings you can actually carve out this wall even further so for example we can let's try something different let's try a sweep 
And then if I just go with pick a path option, I can pick this circle. Now if I just hit finish and go to edit profile, I can kind of cut away from this in any weird fashion that I want. Maybe something like this, hit finish. Let's see if this works. There we go. And if I just go to cut, select the wall first, then the void. There we go. So we have an opening and then we have this kind of funnel shape around that. So this uh, th this way of approaching it gives you way more versatility, but the downside is that you have to go and just create an in-place family. But if you go with finish model, as you can see, it's there. Can we try to move it? Uh, as you can see, we cannot move it. In order to move it, you have to go back into edit in place. Try to select both voids. Use the control key to make selection of both of those. And then you can kind of move them around if you want. So as you can see, it can be a bit difficult to <laughs> navigate later on, but you can make any sort of shape opening that you want. So this is probably the most versatile tool uh, in this whole area when it comes to openings. Let's go back into architecture and then we also have the shaft opening. So what is that for? Well, that's for creating shafts. So in a lot of buildings, well, in all buildings, you need to have a staircase if you have multiple levels or an elevator. And for those, you have to have a opening in the floor. Now, if I just go here into maybe level two, you can create an opening by selecting the floor. Let's just use the tab key to find the floor. There we go. And then you can go here into edit boundary and then add the opening, but that would take a lot of time. And then it's difficult to edit because then you would have to kind of go into edit boundary, make a change. But not only that, if you were to uh, if you were to use this approach, then you would have to make the same change to each uh, level. So if you, have to, if you have to go to the floor on level two, then to the floor on level three, and then if you have more levels, it's a nightmare to make a change as far as this opening. But let's just turn this into wireframe. If you go here to shaft opening, you can go and just create a simple rectangle like that, hit finish, and as you can see, it makes an opening. So you can just go all the way through, all the way to the top of the building, exit out top, maybe go here into hidden line, and there we go. As you can see, we have a shaft opening that goes all the way to the floor, At and at any point you can go here into edit sketch and make some changes. So you can maybe make it an arc here, and as you can see, it's really easy to make a change. It's really easy to edit. You can select it, you can move it around using the arrow keys. So it's really versatile. So I really love this shaft opening tool. And finally, let's take a look at the uh, dormer opening tool. So whenever you create a dormer like this, you well, you have to create an opening. If I just turn this into wireframe, you will notice that we don't really have any openings. So this is a basically a roof and it doesn't really open for this dormer. So let's go back here into hidden line. And then I'm just going to click here on dormer opening. So you basically first you have to select the roof to be cut by the dormer opening, which is this roof in this case. And then you have to pick roof edges. So for picking roof edges, you can pick, uh, of course, all of the walls. To just make sure to select the outlines of the walls, which can be harder than it looks like, but I think I'm getting the right ones. So it's this one here, this one here. Now it's really difficult, you don't really get sketch tools, you just have to use this pick lines option, uh, but uh, once you get the hang of it, don't worry, it really gets a lot easier. So anyways, we have an opening cut out, so we just have to go to trim and extend to kind of trim all of this and extend it to corner. And there we go. So if I just hit finish, we have an opening. And now if I just select this roof, uh, as you can see, there is an opening in that roof to accommodate this uh, dormer. And that's exactly what we want to have. Okay, so that's pretty much it on openings in Revit. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have learned something new. If you want to check out all of my Revit project files, over 500 files so far, as well as all of my uh, all of my advanced courses, check out the first link in the description. It takes you there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Make sure to like, share, and comment. And also uh, make sure to subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, and suggestions, just leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.